series now called to order. I want to welcome any, everyone here uh, to this afternoon's uh, uh, Military Personnel Subcommittee hearing. The purpose of today's hearing uh, is to receive an overview of the military services existing social media policy and to learn what changes are being considered to strengthen, disseminate, and enforce these policies in light of recent reports of extremely disturbing online behavior. The rapid emergence of social media as one of the dominant means of communication over the past few years has resulted in many positive and negative consequences. While social media has proven to be an effective and efficient means of instantly disseminating important information and views to millions of people, it can also serve as an all too effective platform for bullying and harassment. Although social media has the power to connect service members and veterans seeking support, these same tools can be used to demean and psychologically harm fellow service members. While these issues are not limited to the military and in fact are rampant throughout civilian society, social media harassment in, military, in a military setting can be particularly damaging because of its on-service member morale and good order, because of its effect on service member morale and good order and discipline. In short, these actions can erode our military readiness. In recognition of these challenges, I am aware that each of the military services has a social media policy designed to govern service members' conduct when using social media. However, it is clear from recent cases that these policies have not been effective and must be strengthened in order to prevent the abhorrent behavior recently reported in conjunction with the United States, uh, with, with Mar the Marines United case. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses today about the military service's current social media policy and how these policies are communicated and trained to the force. I'm also interested to hear what improvements each of the services are considering in light of the recent cases and how the services will ensure that every service member receives effective training on appropriate online behavior and bystander intervention. Finally, I would like to know what resources are available for victims of online harassment, including legal and behavioral health assistance. Before I introduce our panel, let me offer the ranking member, Ms. Spear, an opportunity to make her opening remarks. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I have to say I'm disappointed in the topic of this hearing. Framing the issue as military social media policies frankly misses the point. No one has ever gone on Facebook, looked at non-consensually posted intimate photos, typed a rape threat, and then stopped and said, oh, I better not make rape th threats. That's against the military social media policy. All of these services have had social media policies that state it is against good order and discipline to make disrespectful and derogatory posts. But here we are, exactly where we were four years ago, when I stood on the House floor and condemned the online bullying of U.S. Marine Corps service women on a public Facebook page. At the time, General Amos, who was then the Commandant of the Marines, responded by stating, quote, we share your indignation, unquote then proceeded in his letter to address the online abuse of female Marines as an IT issue. Colleagues, it's time to get serious about this. General Neller told us just last week that, quote, this is not a social media problem, but we have a cultural problem, unquote. So it's appalling that the committee is treating it as such in this hearing. And it's appalling that we are not hearing from any service members or veterans who have been victimized by non-consensual pornography. If this was just about inappropriate social media use, well, I don't want to have to be the one to have to tell Congress or military leadership about this, but it's not hard to find pornography on the internet. There is no inherent need to seek out photos of one's colleagues to make puerile Facebook posts whether or not they are against official social media policy. No, this is about service members deliberately trying to degrade, humiliate, and threaten fellow service members. They encourage stalking, distributed stolen intimate photos, and have reduced their comrades 
to a collection of body parts. This cultural rot, which has clearly regressed even before since 2013, harms our troops and our readiness. It is abundantly clear that this is not a few bad actors, but rather a cancer that has continued to spread and thrive in both the enlisted ranks and the officer corps. The collateral damage has been the countless women and men who have answered the call to serve their country and have been betrayed. I had requested a hearing with the service chiefs to discuss these issues, but here we are talking about IT again without a single survivor of non-consensual pornography giving testimony. So today, let's have a discussion about the culture of the military and how to enforce these policies and address inappropriate and illegal behavior on social media. The services bring in almost 200,000 new enlistees every year that come from a wide variety of backgrounds. Increasingly, those recruits are female. For example, more than 25% of new Navy recruits are women. Female service members are not going away. They're here to stay. They have every right to serve their country. They have every right to have the opportunity to uh, have an experience in the military that gives them benefits and the opportunity to ex extend their education. As General Neller said last week, the reality is that we can't go to war without women anymore. So we need to deal with this. What I would like to learn from each of our witnesses today is how to, do you embed your policies into everyday training and military life? If it's not ingrained into daily life and operations of the military, then I believe it's not taken seriously. And how do you assess and adopt those policies when it's clear they are not working? More importantly, how do you reinforce that the type of behavior we have seen recently is not okay? Do you need to reevaluate how you are educating the force? And what can Congress do to help? We don't need to talk about social media policies. We need to talk about how to end this hatred and misogyny. Thank you, and I look forward to your testimony. Thank you, Ms. Spear. I issue unanimous consent that non-subcommittee members be allowed to uh, participate in today's hearing uh, after all subcommittee members have had an opportunity to ask questions. Is there objection? Seeing none so ordered. Without objection, uh, uh, non -submit subcommittee members will be recognized at the appropriate time for five minutes. We are joined today by an outstanding panel. Uh, we will give each witness the opportunity to present his or her testimony and each member an opportunity to question the witnesses for five minutes. We would also respectfully remind the witnesses to summarize to the greatest extent possible the high points of your written testimony in five minutes or less. Your written comments and statements will be made part of the hearing record. Uh, let me welcome our panel, uh, Mr. Anthony Curta, uh, performing the duties of Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, uh, Lieutenant General Mark uh, Brilakis, uh, Deputy Commandant, Manpower and Reserve Affairs, Lieutenant General uh, uh, Gina Grosso, uh, Deputy Chief of Staff for Manpower, Personnel and Services, United States Air Force, uh, Vice Admiral William Burke, uh, Chief of Naval Personnel, and Major General uh, Jason Evans, uh, Director, Military Personnel Management, United States Army. Okay. Uh, with that, Mr. Curta, you, you may make your opening statement. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Speer, distinguished members of the subcommittee, thank you for inviting us to testify today regarding DOD policies addressing sexual harassment, hazing, and bullying by service members through the use of electronic communications to include online social media sites. The department is committing to providing and promoting an environment where all service members are treated with dignity and respect. We are focused on eradicating behaviors that undermine military readiness, including unlawful discrimination and harassment. Such misconduct is fundamentally at odds with our core values and the expectations of the American people. These behaviors jeopardize our military mission. We can trust with our, within our ranks and erode unit cohesion. The U.S. military is an institution held in high regard by the American people, mostly because we embody high standards and values. However, we are not a perfect institution. 
Overwhelmingly, the vast majority of our brave men and women serving in uniform do so honorably and bravely. When these men and women volunteer to serve in our military, they do so knowing the risks involved. However, bullying and sexual harassment, cyber or otherwise, by fellow service members should never be one of those risks. We do our best to uphold our standards and values across the world every minute of every day. On occasion, service members fail to meet these standards. When that happens, we endeavor to the best of our ability to hold each and every one accountable for their actions. I can tell you that the Secretary of Defense is investing a significant amount of his personal time to this issue, providing his vision and direction directly to the service secretaries and the department's most senior uniform leaders and listening to those most involved in setting and upholding our standards and our values. The Secretary believes that our most successful and ready warfighting units are those with the best discipline. On the battlefield, you must have full trust and confidence in your teammates. That is not possible when you do not treat them with dignity and respect. We have structures in place to address this issue with a combination of leadership, because we treat this as a leadership issue, education and training, needed updates to our policies, and the flexibilities that the UCMJ affords us. As we continue to address social media activities and review our policies, we will of course work with the Congress on any issues or challenges that we identify. Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. It's an honor to serve our military members and I look forward to your questions. Chairman Kaufman, Ranking Member Speer, and distinguished members of the subcommittee, I appreciate the opportunity to appear before the subcommittee today to provide an overview on Marine Corps social media policies. As our Commandant testified to last week, we are all disturbed and hugely disappointed by recent online conduct by some of our Marines toward their fellow Marines. We take this online behavior as an attack on our Marine Corps ethos. You have my word that we will hold accountable any behavior that has a corrosive effect on the good order and discipline within our core. We are all committed to using all the means within our authority to address this unacceptable conduct. Our first priority is to take care of those harms by this recent online conduct. We, conduct, or we continue to encourage individuals to come forward and we stand ready to provide immediate support, information, and refer referral services to those needing assistance. Every Marine who takes the oath to support and defend our Constitution who puts on the uniform and who puts their life on the line to defend our way of life here and at home is provided and has earned the trust and respect of the American people. So too, should they be given that same trust and respect by those of us in uniform. Any breach of that trust and respect within the ranks cannot be tolerated and must be dealt with with affirmative steps to support those individuals harmed by these actions with clarity to ensure that all Marines act with honor and with accountability for those who fail to live up to our standards of conduct. We will be immediate, decisive, unceasing in fixing this problem and defeating this attack on our core values. Thank you for the opportunity to present at today's hearing. Uh, thank you for your testimony, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Grosso. You're now recognized for five minutes. Chairman Kaufman, Ranking Member Speer, and distinguished members of the subcommittee, Thank you for this opportunity to discuss recent events affecting our airmen and their families. Let me be clear, cyberbullying, hazing, and sharing private images of our airmen is inconsistent with the Air Force's core values and our culture of dignity and respect. While the tools of modern warfare may change, the importance of trust never will. Trust is essential to victory on the battlefield, and when we violate trust on social media, we break down the fabric of what it means to be an airman. It also degrades the trust between the Air Force and the American people we serve. For a number of years, the Air Force has worked to improve how we build culture and instill an understanding of expected behaviors in our airmen. We started in 2012 by publishing Air Force Instruction 1-1, Air Force standards that was further updated in 2014 to clarify, among other things, the social media section of the instruction. We went one step further in 2015 in a time of diminishing resources when we stood up the Profession of Arms Center of Excellence, affectionately known as PACE. 
PACE is dedicated to providing tools and training materials designed to help commanders, supervisors, and airmen understand and embrace our core values, our standards, and our expectations for all airmen. In the specific area of social media, we have training modules in the curriculum of all our accession sources, officer and enlisted, to include scenario-based training at basic military training that covers social media use. We also cover social media use in all our professional military education courses from Airmen Leadership School through Air War College. We have incorporated social media policies into a variety of generic and functionally specific Air Force instructions that discuss professional and unprofessional relationships, as well as a proper use of social media and Air Force communications. In parallel, our performance evaluation system includes a requirement to evaluate and comment on an airman's adherence to treating other airmen with dignity and respect, as well as an airman's responsibility to positively contribute to a healthy organizational climate. While these various efforts have been ongoing, developing and improving our Air Force culture is a continuous journey, whereby we monitor, adjust, and evolve. Unfortunately, these recent social media events provide us another lens to view areas where we can improve and better scaffold our training, education, and policy efforts. From an accountability perspective, we condemn these inappropriate acts. The Air Force Office of Special Investigations um, is investigating allegations regarding information and inappropriate photographs of airmen posted on websites without their prior consent. Airmen whose images were posted without consent have a number of resources available to them. Regardless of if an airman is deployed or at home station, they can seek help from their unit commanders, first sergeants, and supervisors. They are also encouraged to seek help directly from a variety of resources to include chaplains, military family life consultants, mental health professionals, airmen and family readiness centers, master resiliency trainers, the inspector general, security forces, the local judge advocate, equal opportunity, our office of special investigations, our victim advocates, special victims counsel, and sexual response sexual assault response coordinators, all who provide care and serve a bridge to other specialties. There are also online resources available through Military One Source and the Department of Defense. We are currently assessing all legal and administrative tools at our disposal to attack this problem and are considering additional authorities we need as a service. Once our review is complete, we will not hesitate for asking your assistance in providing additional tools as necessary. If the past two decades have, have taught us anything, it is that the demand for airspace and cyber power is growing. In the words of our Chief of Staff, from our newest Airman Basic to the Chief of Staff, we are all accountable for meeting ethical and performance standards in our actions. We should live our core values every day, on and off duty. We must continuously conduct ourselves in a manner that brings credit to our nation and each other. Service in, an air, in our Air Force is a higher calling, and we carry this legacy forward for future generations of airmen. Thank you for your time today, and I look forward to your questions. Lieutenant General Grosso, thanks so much for your testimony. Uh, Vice Admiral Burke, you're now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Coffin, Ranking Member Speer, and distinguished members of this committee for this opportunity to discuss recent events. The military has felt the sting of disappointment from multiple reports of unprofessional and totally inappropriate behavior by some of our service members. Despite repeated efforts to end harassment and cyberbullying in our ranks, this intolerable behavior still exists. There is no room in our Navy for this toxic behavior, and we are aggressively going after it. It makes us weaker, it erodes trust within our team, and it cedes advantage to the enemy. We are committed to eradicating this behavior and this mindset from our force. The United States Navy is a professional force, and the American people expect us to maintain high standards. This type of behavior is not who we are. We expect better of ourselves. The bad actors we've discovered have found a new home underground. We will not tolerate their cowardice in the dark shadows of the Internet. We will be relentless in exposing these perceived sanctuaries and reinforcing our expectation of sailors' conduct, whether in uniform, at home, or online. To get after this, the Navy immediately stood up a senior leader working group to attack this from the top down. This is not a one and done review, but rather a comprehensive strategy and plan that underpins our efforts. In addition to helping any sailor who may be impacted by this sort of behavior, we are going after this in several ways, but the main points are, first, to go after character. This is not how we treat our team members. This is an issue of both leadership and courage. Our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral John Richardson, directed force-wide discussions 
on expectations for online conduct, emphasizing that there are no bystanders, even in cyberspace. As sailors, our conduct at work, at home, or online must exemplify the Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment at all times. And when we see something wrong, no team member should look the other way. These discussions are being led by our small team leaders who are best positioned to influence both the workplace environment and off-duty conduct. We are emphasizing this element of character and the idea of no bystander into the Navy's leader development framework and into our broader sexual harassment and sexual assault campaign plan. Next, the online content. The Navy Criminal Investigative Service continues to investigate misbehavior online and is working with social media companies to curb this activity. And then uh, accountability. We're reviewing the Uniform Code of Military Justice and Navy policy governing mandatory administrative separation to ensure that they are adequate. Sailors who are involved in inappropriate online behavior and lose the trust and confidence of the commanding officers will be held accountable by a full range of criminal and administrative actions. We have provided commanding officers and their teams a toolkit for this issue, which includes a UCMJ guidance, uh, an updated online conduct guide, and a social media handbook. And we are encouraging anyone with direct knowledge of explicit photos taken without consent or knowledge to contact the Navy Criminal Investigative Service via multiple avenues. In closing, we cannot allow ourselves to be tainted by those who do not share our values. And while we have made progress, there is still much work to be done. Navy leaders, from the flag level down to the deck plates, own this problem. As a team, we will solve it. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Admiral Burke. Uh, Major General Evans, you're now recognized for five minutes. Chairman Kaufman, Ranking Member Speer, distinguished members of the committee, Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you on behalf of America's Army. The Army is a value-based organization comprised of a team of professionals, soldiers, and Army civilians. Harassment, bullying, hazing, stalking, discrimination, retaliation, and any type of misconduct that undermines the dignity and respect will not be tolerated. And those found in violation will be held accountable. The Army has worked diligently to develop a holistic continuum for professional conduct in all aspects of soldiers and Army civilians' lives. The Army has implemented our online conduct policies throughout every level of training and military education so that every soldier understands how to treat others with dignity and respect. Army policy states that hazing, bullying, and other behaviors that undermine dignity and respect are punitive in nature. These actions are fundamentally in opposition to the Army values and our prohibited behaviors. Our Army Wide guidance published in 2015 also makes clear that this prohibition applies at all time and extends to all forms of virtual and electronic media. Commanders and supervisors at all levels are responsible for enforcing this prohibition. They are required to conduct annual hazing and bullying training, including online conduct, publish and post written command policy statements on the treatment of persons, and take appropriate actions in response to alleged violations. In 2015, then Chief of Staff of the Army, General Ordierno, established a special initiatives team to address online harassment via social media. And to address the dilemma of prevention and response to unprofessional behavior online, the special initiatives team coordinated across the Army, outlined three lines of efforts to achieve the goal of curving unprofessional online behavior by soldiers. First, by updating existing policies and regulations, updating training materials and infusing training base with the information and best practices, and sharing information regarding responsible online conduct. The Army developed online conduct discussion points and vignettes in October 2015. These discussion points and vignettes have been incorporated into institutional, command, and unit training packages for equal opportunity, equal employment opportunity, treatment of persons, sexual harassment, assault, response, and prevention, and cyber awareness, among others. In addition to updated policy, Army Public Affairs developed a strategic messaging campaign to raise awareness of online conduct and the consequences of misconduct and published a social media handbook that includes an expanded discussion of online responsibilities and best practices section on protecting oneself from and reporting online misconduct. 
The Army developed methods to track and report online misconduct through sexual harassment assault response prevention reporting and law enforcement agencies. Finally, Not In My Squad program developed by the Center of Army Profession and Ethics was designed to help soldiers assess the state of mutual trust and cohesion within their squads. The grassroots nature of the interactive program helps junior leaders to gain situational understanding and inspire ethical and professional behavior. The Not In My Squad campaign facilitates leader involvement and accountability and aids in the creation of a professional and ethical culture among members of the Army team. As our Chief of Staff, General Milley, recently remarked on this topic, we expect leaders and influencers from squad level up to talk about and demonstrate what respect looks like at work, at home, and online. In closing, the Army recognizes the potential dangers concerning social media and is proactively working to ensure soldiers are aware of the standards of conduct through policies, training, and programs. We will continue to enforce standards and imbue soldiers and Army civilians with Army values and emphasize professional behavior in all that we do. Again, thank you for the opportunity, and I look forward to your questions. Uh, Major General Evans, thank you so much for your, your testimony. Um, Mr. Curta, each of the services has a social media policy, but they differ in substance and form. In addition, the, the proponent for the social media policy, policy differs from uh, service to service. Is there a benefit to standardizing across the services these policies as well as the uh, proponent for the policies? Sir, thank you for the question, and I, I would say um, very briefly, no, I don't believe there is. So, and I, and I say that because um, the, the Secretary has been very clear that the cultures of the individual services uh, are great warfighting readiness um, advantages. And when we make policy, uh, it has to be uh, broad enough that the services within their cultures um, can do what is right. And so what is, what is right and best for, uh, you know, an army, uh, an army soldier in a brigade combat team in, uh, in Italy is not the same for the uh, sailor that's out on an aircraft carrier, uh, you know, somewhere in the Middle East. So our, our policies have to be, uh, give the intent of the, uh, of the secretary uh, to, the, to the service secretaries and the service chiefs and be broad enough, directive enough, so that uh, they know the intent of what is expected and then within their cultures devise the best solution that works best for their service. I'm going to ask uh, all of you the same question. Uh, I'll start with uh, Lieutenant General Brilakis, United States Marine Corps. How are you integrating social media policies into training on other topics such as sexual assault prevention or ethics training? Sir, thanks for the question. Uh, with respect to our social media policy, um, our first policy was written in 10, 2010. It was the first of its kind. Uh, it was reinforced in a Marine administrative message in 2013, and last week we reissued a, a new policy to cover the issues with social media to make Marines mindful that they have responsibilities in the social space, to remind Marines that they are our best messenger of the Marine Corps if they operate within the guidelines of the social media policy, and then to remind them that mis uh, not adhering to that policy has consequences through the various elements of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Lastly, what it does, it talks to Marines who may be the victims of misbehavior in social media, those remedies, those individuals they can reach out to, that support that's, that's throughout the Marine Corps, whether it's our uh, sexual assault uh, response coordinators, our unit uh, victims advocates, the victims legal counsels, the uh, equal opportunity representatives in units, uh, the legal counsel, the NCIS, et cetera, all wrapped up into that, that particular policy. Um, what we're running right now, what, what the Commandant has done, has directed us to form a task force, a very high-level task force. It's chaired by the Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps. It's been meeting for the last two weeks. Um, I sat through a two-and-a-half-hour me uh, meeting of the Executive Council of this task force uh, today. Uh, there's been a, lot of, uh, been a lot of discussion. There's some progress. There's some tangible actions that are going on. 
uh, you mentioned education and training on this social media policy, and that's important. It's critical. Uh, part of what is being looked at at this task force are not only current actions that can be taken, and you and you are well aware of Commandant Neller immediately getting out and publishing a video message to the entire force, telling him that this behavior is unacceptable. This behavior is antithetical to the ethos of Marines. Um, those actions, this update of this policy, are all products of that task force. Task force is also looking in terms of long range future operations, if you will, with respect to the social media task force. Uh, training and education is fundamental to that. A review of the programs of instructions at all our, our formal courses will be part of that process to ensure that the training that we do is consistent, repetitive, and runs through the Marine license. Okay, so my, my time is limited, so I'll just uh, leave it with the Marine Corps right now, uh, since the, the problems seem to be uh, centered on the Marine Corps, and that is that uh, right now, though, is I, I realize you're, you're reviewing all this, but right now, is there a, a, a social media uh, training requirement in terms of this particular issue uh, the, at boot camp and then on an annual, a, 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 an annual training requirement for every Marine? I'll be honest with you, sir. I can't tell you whether there is a training requirement as it existed prior to two weeks ago. Right. What I will tell you, what I will say is the Commandant has already been on a trip down to Camp Lejeune to pass the message that was put out in his video, in his video message and also in the, the MAR admin. Uh, we have, he will just sign, he's just signed off on a white letter that has gone out to all commanders, every Marine, to include myself, will we'll sign a formal counseling mm -hmm. on, the, on the tenets of that policy and our expectations that they adhere to that policy. Uh, Thank you. Ranking Member Spear, you're now recognized for five minutes. And Mr. Curta, I, I was somewhat astonished by your comment, frankly, um, to think that we need separate social media policies from one service to another makes no sense. It would seem to me that if you take a picture without the consent of someone, and then post it on the internet with their name, rank, and serial number, whether you're a Marine or a sailor or you know, any one of the other services, you are violating the law. So why wouldn't we have a social media uh, policy that was clear throughout all the services? Well, ma'am, I, I hope I didn't uh, uh, leave the impression that, uh, uh, that we think there should be no OSD policy on social media. No, um, I, I, you know what? Right. I, you don't even need to answer it. I, I think you're wrong. I think that no. this goes to just fundamental values. It goes to fundamental culture. Yes. And I just want to make that, that statement. I just don't think it, it makes sense. I just want to share with you um, a couple of what... I received back in 2013. Don't wrap it and tap it, tape her and rape her. This is Marines now. Uh, here's another one. Listen up, bitches. I'm your worst nightmare. If you piss us off, I won't give an F who you are, and we will rape your world. And I'm not talking about the come here and smell this kind of rape. I won't read the rest of this. Are you getting the message? I raped pregnant woman once, best threesome forever. Um, I just don't want to even look at any more of these. It, is, it was bad in 2013, it's bad in 2017, nothing has changed. Of the 30,000 persons that are on that Marines United website, 730 of them are active duty, and 150 of them are reserves. So we have a problem here that just talking about the policy is, is just not going to cut it. Um, I guess I want to ask the other services. Let's start with you, uh, General Grosso. Have you gone now and since the Marines United uh, dust up, have, have you gone and looked to see if there were sites with Air Force members represented? 
Can, can you turn it on, please? Oh, yes, ma'am. Our Office of Air Force and Special Investigations has looked, um, and they've looked at over 30 different sites, and we, to date, have not found a site specifically dedicated to denigrating airmen, female airmen. Okay, how about you, Admiral Kirk? Yes, ma'am, we worked with the Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Um, there are no similar websites that are directly affiliated with the Navy uh, that have been identified to date. There are literally millions of websites af affiliated and that are dot-com for-profit websites that have, you know, words like topless sailor and things like that in their, in their title with uh, all sorts of postings and, and, and things of that nature on them, uh, many of them not official photographs. So th those are the sorts of stuff that we're pouring through right now. General Evans. Ma'am, I'm aware of an effort of a multi-service investigation um, level to look at a site that was potentially linked to the Marines United site. That was an Army site? No, ma'am, that had multiple service members on the site, a site called Tumblr, and I'm, I'm aware of uh, an ongoing multi-service investigation with that. But the rest of you weren't aware of that? Okay, see, I think, I think you should all be aware of it. You should all be looking at it. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, UCMJ Article 120 only applies to uh, those who take pictures, intimate pictures of someone without their consent. There's nothing that refers to it being distributed without consent, because many pictures are, are sometimes um, taken and offered for uh, in consent because you're your intimate partner is um, deployed and you're sending them a picture, you then break up and then your uh, former intimate uh, partner posts it. We've introduced legislation last week that would amend UCMJ to include the prohibition of uh, non-consensual sharing of explicit photographs. I'd like to ask each of the services if you uh, support the legislation. Well, ma'am, if I could uh, uh, take that one. Um, we, we cannot comment on uh, pending uh, legislation. However, I would say as we, as we all look at this problem and decide how best to respond to it, uh, both at a department level and the individual service level, we are open to all uh, good ideas and partnering, partnering uh, with the Congress for anything that gives us um, better, better tools for both awareness and uh, accountability. But we cannot comment on pending legislation. How about the services? Can they comment independent of you? No, no, no ma'am, that's a, I'm sorry, right. that's a department policy. All right, um, I yield back. Thank you, Ranking Member Speer. Uh, Mr. Jones, you're now recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and I associate with many of the comments that uh, Ms. Speer has made and been on this committee for 22 years and served with you and others for a long period of time, and I can't help but think of the pressure that's on our society because of uh, the new technology, uh, the threat to our world because of cyberspace uh, issues that we all deal with, on particular this committee, classified briefings and everything. And here we are uh, dealing with uh, the societal problems of uh, the internet and how it impacts our young people many who go into the military, all branches. Thank you all again for your service and being here today. And, you know, I represent the 3rd District of North Carolina, which is the home of Camp Lejeune Marine Base, Cherry Point Marine Air Station. And, and obviously, uh, this has been a huge issue for our nation, but also for the district I represent, not just those in uniform, the Marine Corps primarily, but for the citizens uh, who really know that this problem is actually an issue that has grown and festered in our society. And, you know, when you see children that are five, six, and seven getting iPhones for Christmas, uh, I think you all have an impossible responsibility to get to the 
genesis of what has happened in the different services, not just one, even though this is primarily the Marine Corps. But this, I think, I'm afraid I'm, I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm afraid I might be right. This is going to be a, a, um, a battle, if I can put it that way, for the different services. And again, we talk primarily about the Marine Corps today that uh, we have not seen before. Uh, and it's not going to change. Uh, it's going to be with us when I'm dead and gone. And many of you young people sitting out there being an old man like I am today. But uh, I want to ask you, with all you're trying to do, and I know that uh, General Mattis, now Secretary of Defense, and also the uh, General Nella, the Commandant, who I have great respect for, uh, this is a, a task that is uh, going to be a difficult one. Uh, because of the darkness of the world of, of the Internet, so to speak. Do you feel at this beginning stage of this investigation uh, that you have all the resources that you need to try to get to the genesis of this problem? Well, sir, first, uh, thank you for the question. And, and, and while we you know, acknowledge that this is a, a, a problem uh, that is also in society, we don't, we don't hide behind that. I understand. Right? We hold ourselves to higher uh, values and standards than, uh, than is in society. But you know, I'm also a little bit hopeful because uh, the department has taken on great cultural issues in the past and been successful, whether it's uh, integration of the races, whether it's the rampant drug abuse we used to see in the 70s and 80s, whether it's the alcohol problems that we, uh, we saw again in the 70s and 80s, we have taken on some of those large issues and had cultural issues and, and had great success over time uh, when we applied uh, leadership and the element of time. Now, some of those things took you know, many decades to, uh, to solve and to change the culture in an organization of two million plus people does seek does take uh, time, and we realize it's limited in this case. So I'm, I'm hopeful, and I think as we, uh, as all of us uh, here and uh, the rest of the leadership of the department get further into this, we'll find out further tools that will be helpful to us. We don't have a list uh, of those today, right. but we certainly will uh, we'll, we'll, uh, be talking further with, uh, with you and uh, the rest of the Congress and whoever else we need for, uh, for access to uh, certain tools. Thank you, Tony. Congressman Jones, thank you. Um, there's a lot of work to do. This task force that uh, the Commandant has stood up is working across uh, what's happening today, what we need to do for the future, current policies, a review of all the policies that affect, affect this. Most importantly, dealing with those individuals who have been harmed by this, this activity, this ab abhorrent activity. And so um, we are learning as we're going. Uh, the commitment of the Commandant has been clear. It's been strong. He wants action soon, and we're, and we're working to give him um, a series of executable recommendations on, upon which he can act. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, uh, Mr. Brady, you're now recognized for five minutes, and, and then we're going to have to uh, recess for a vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't really have any questions. I probably have an observation. Lieutenant General Baracus, online humiliation generation posting of images you have on your statement. Lieutenant Grasso, vile, I mean, private images you have sharing posted on your, in your statement. Uh, inappropriate behavior, harassment and bullying. But Mr. Kurt, Kurt, you have you have sexual harassment, hazing, and bullying, but I don't see any images. And Vice Admiral Burke, you have inappropriate behavior, harassment, bullying, but no images. And the same with General Evans, harassment, bullying, hazing, stalking, retaliation, but no images. I really was under the impression I'm really kind of concerned about images because that's the new new thing now with the internet and people posting images, and God knows how far it goes and where it goes. I'm just wondering why the three you don't have images. Well, yes. uh, uh, Congressman Brady, I would I would just say this: uh, whether it's the use of images, whether it's the use of social online media, those are tools 
uh, by which people are denigrating their fellow service members through hazing, bullying, sexual harassment. There's a number of, uh, of different ways to, uh, to characterize it. So we were trying to represent the fundamental behavior, which is bullying, sexual harassment, hazing in this case. There's a variety of tools that people uh, use to perpetrate that type of behavior, but we have to get to the, uh, to the fundamental behavior. But I just wanted to hear you say images. Images, yes, sir, absolutely. That is definitely one of the tools that's, that's, uh, that's being used. Yes, sir. West Admiral Burke. Yes, sir, the images in the social media and the Internet are, are just the new, uh, the, the environment we had not been thinking about as, as much as we should have been. Major, Major General. Yes, sir. Uh, images in terms of what we've defined in, in the online additional uh, guidance and on online conduct would include a any harm to do to anybody by via virtual electronic, which would include images, sir. Yeah, well, I wanted to hear that because all these other things aren't really like online. Any appropriate behavior, bullying, you know, harassment, that's not necessarily online, but the images are what we're talking about which are online and which everybody kind of like looks at. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the gentleman yield. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, I would just for clarification, uh, and I think we're all in, in very much agreement uh, on this, not just with the panel, but also, uh, you know, here on the committee on these issues. But I would like to point out that uh, in Section 920, Article 120C, uh, that images uh, and privacy uh, and many of these things are addressed in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. A little bit of confusion about what is in the code. Uh, Section 2, knowingly photographs, videotapes, films, or records by any means the private area of another person without that other person's consent and under circumstances in which that other person has a reasonable expectation of privacy and then it defines this reasonable expectation uh, means under circumstances in which a reasonable person would believe that he or she could disrobe in privacy without being concerned that an image of a private area or person uh, was being captured. Broadcast means uh, the term to broadcast means to electronically transmit a visual image with the intent that it be viewed by a person or person. So the Uniform Code very much does address these issues, and, and what I would like to uh, point out, this is really something that demands accountability uh, rather than additional policy uh, or code. Uh, I would be interested in, in your thoughts on that, uh, Mr. Curta, and whoever else would like to comment. Do you see this as an accountability issue, or do you see that the Uniform Code doesn't adequately address it when it appears that in the language it, it already does, sir. The problem is sometimes pictures are taken with consent, and then subsequently. And and uh, if, if I may, uh, to the ranking member, it it does address on the privacy uh, without being concerned that an image uh, in terms of that. So it 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 specifically addresses that that it was not with consent, uh, that they are actually uh, assuming that they were they were in complete privacy, and so I point that out because in in section uh, 920 Article 120C the the language seems to be pretty well defined to address a lot of the electronic, uh, digital uh, imagery uh, aspects of privacy. And I, I just, I, I'm, I would be curious to know, is this an accountability issue or is this something that the Uniform Code does not adequately cover? Well, sir, th thank you for the question. I would just say, you know, the, the back and forth kind of uh, illustrates how complex this, this problem is. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's accountability. We have standards, we have values, as I mentioned, you know, in my opening statement. And, and sometimes we find that people don't live up to those values and standards. When they don't, we hold them accountable. Again, as the, uh, we can't talk about an ongoing investigation, but it, as it proceeds, I think we'll have a better idea of our tools. We, we have uh, policies. Um, I think they're, they're actually, uh, in many respects, uh, very clear on hazing, bullying, sexual harassment, the use of, uh, of online media to perpetrate those. Um, so the, the policy is there. 
uh, and and we'll see what our tools available for accountability. But and, I, and, I'm and if sure I may know point that. out, sir, uh, you know it's a uniform code. This is something that can put people in prison, uh, that can give them a felony conviction. This is something that would result in uh, courts martial, uh, the loss of rank and privileges, and, and honorable discharge, any number of things. So it's not just policy. It's it is the legal standard by which everything, good order and discipline is governed. And, and that's why before we got too confused on what's there or what's not, I wanted to point out uh, my understanding under the UCMJ is that, that the language is in there. Is it your understanding that it is not? Because there's been some of that uh, in the questioning today. My understanding is that it is there, so now it's a matter of accountability. I, is that true or, or not? Uh, no, sir. This is all about accountability. Yes, sir. This is all about having individuals who have, have b betrayed the trust of their fellow service members, holding them accountable. The Uniform Code of Military Justice has no, a number of articles under which, uh, in certain cases, we can bring these things to a prosecution. You've mentioned 120C. 120C is a relatively new article and there's not a lot of experience behind it. Right now, the uh, NCIS, this is their number one priority. They formed a task force with the other services investigative bodies, and they're working cooperatively to determine the facts and uncover the, uh, the um, investigatory material that we can then turn over to commanders to, to take out the, the uniform code of military Mr. justice. Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure who I asked, but if I could just interject one second because of what my colleague just said, which is Why so don't we relevant. Do, can we do that when we, right when I won't, we come back? I won't be able to return, unfortunately. It's going to be very quick. I am actually holding your enlistment document, and it says right here, subject to separation during at the end of my enlistment, if my behavior fails to meet acceptable military standards, I may be discharged and given a certificate for less than honorable service. I don't know why we have to wait if you tell them at the very beginning and they sign off saying that their behavior is not acceptable, they understand what the, what the uh, parameters of acceptable is, and I hope that they do, I don't understand why we have to then pursue many various avenues. Do you still have the power to throw them out if it's very clear that they can't do this? When they sign up and they signed on to this document. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. We have the authority, but everybody, is, everybody deserves due process. And the Uniform Code of Military Justice requires due process. Whether it be through an administrative procedure or military justice procedure, there are processes. I so understand, the but fact that I, it, the I fact have to, I'm sorry because we're extending. Yes, I just have to say we need to do it at the very beginning. They need to know they will be thrown out. Thank yes, you. And I yield back. Thank you, Chairman.
This hearing is called back to order. The, uh, let me, uh, um, I had started a question about training. And so uh, I started in it with the Marine Corps and now I want to go to the other services. Um, and the question is this, how are you integrating social media policies into training on, the other, uh, on other topics uh, such as sexual assault prevention or ethics training? Um, uh, Lieutenant General Grosso, I wonder if you can answer this question, please. Uh, yes, sir. As, as uh, I indicated, we have training um, across our continuum of learning, but as we do, we stood up a task force as well to do a complete review of our policies and our training um, and, our, and our accountability. And that is one of the things that we are taking a hard look at. Is the training synchronized? Is it properly scaffolded? Is there other places we should put it? And some of the places we're looking at, we, we do resiliency training, and we thought maybe putting some um, real scenarios in our resiliency training. We also do new spouse training, and we start talking our, to our spouses about it through that program and through our key spouse program, um, and in some of our pre-deployment pre training as well. Um, we, do a, we do social media training, but it's really around OPSEC. And there's probably other opportunities as we look at our training, our cradle to grave um, training where we can put that in. And we also have a um, commander uh, commander's call of the week, and we've already put that module out for the commander's call of the week, but there are, there are I'm sure, other places that we will be able to embed this training in. Thank you real quick. What, in terms of uh, your sexual, in terms of, uh, let's say you're gonna integrate this in with your sexual assault training, it would probably fit there, sexual harassment, sexual assault training. Um, tell me what you do in, uh, so I assume you have uh, training requirements in, in your basic training. Yes, sir, we do. And then do you have them on, a, on an annual basis that are in fact required, uh, that, that, are, that are noted in, in, the, in the personnel file? They are there. We don't necessarily put them in the personnel file, okay. but we track them and, and there is annual training requirements for sexual assault and sexual harassment. Okay. Uh, Vice Admiral Burke. Yes, sir. Uh, we have a full spectrum of, uh, uh, of training that's aimed at sexual harassment and sexual assault prevention that, uh, that includes uh, focus on uh, social media. So at uh, Recruit Training Command for our enlisted folks, we have a course that's uh, called Life Skills, and it's a, it's a full spectrum course that uh, teaches our sailors how to intervene when they see other sailors heading down uh, paths of destructive behaviors. Uh, you know, at, by this point in uh, Recruit Training Command, uh, they should have had uh, Navy core values instilled in them. Uh, so it focuses on how to help other people that are heading down the wrong path. But then it focuses on healthy relationships, stress management, responsible alcohol uh, use, uh, hazing and fraternization, uh, and then heavy emphasis on sexual assault prevention. And this is where we uh, teach folks that it's okay to stand up and say, in fact, they have a responsibility to stand up uh, and say, that's wrong, I don't accept that uh, type of behavior. And we also emphasize what right looks like. We take that approach on it. And in that core module, we, we uh, talk a lot about social media and acceptable behavior on social media. And we also cover uh, OPSEC concerns there, but a lot of social media behavior uh, discussion there. We have a similar uh, approach at the Naval Academy. There the course is called uh, Shape Sexual Harassment and Assault Prevention Education. Uh, similar type of uh, coverage there. And then uh, when folks get out into the fleet, uh, there's a uh, refresher, recurring training that has uh, morphed over the years. Uh, last year's version was called uh, Chart the Course, and there were 16 different modules. There were facilitated uh, DVD course modules. And uh, one are, of, there are, annual, are there annual training requirements? There are, there's an annual training requirement that's on the requirements, and then there's an additional facilitated uh, vignette. And, and the vignette specifically was on, you know, a sailor videotaping someone against without their knowledge and then the decision point and the sure. discussion point was should he email it off or not and uh, sure. and it went from there so there are there are those types of requirements throughout our curriculum yes sir thank you, thank you. Uh, Major General Evans uh, United States Army yes sir all training plans and programs of instructions at all level of the Army to include the initial military entry of training to include uh, pre-command courses and all professional military education, um, incorporate uh, online conduct training as part of equal opportunity training, sexual harassment, assault response prevention training. Uh, thereafter, that training is required on an annual basis 
um, to conduct the equal opportunity training, the sexual uh, uh, harassment assault and response training, and part of that is online conduct is, is, is a, a component of both of those annual trainings. In addition to that, commanders are required to, to publish policy letters on both of those um, and make sure that soldiers know um, how they're supposed to conduct themselves and where they can report this kind of training. And the Army um, Public Affairs has, has published a social media handbook that provides examples of policy letters for social media conduct. Thank you. Um, Ms. Spear, you're now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I want to go back to what our, our good colleague from Oklahoma uh, talked about before um, we recessed, because you have to read this very carefully. He is wrong, and I want to state it for the record. First of all, uh, Article 120C has been around since 2012, so you've had five years to use it. And um, my first question is going to be, have any of you used uh, 120, Article 120C in uh, actually enforcing the social media misuse of photographs? Ranking member, yes, ma'am, we have used Article 120 in um, holding airmen accountable for this offense. For, for these specific, for use of social media with consent or without consent? Uh, it, was, it was revenge porn, and it was um, charged along with other things, but it was part of the charge under 120C. So revenge porn is normally where it is, uh, it's a photograph, an image that is taken of someone with consent and then subsequently distributed without consent. Um, I can get you more details. Okay, so my only point here is, how about any of you others? Ma'am, I'll have to take it for the record. All right, would you, and, and then come back to yeah. us? Ma'am, we had uh, one case of uh, uh, videotaping on a, on a submarine and uh, six individuals were court-martialed under 120C. Without consent. It was, the video was without consent and it was distributed locally okay. without consent. That's, that's clearly under 120C. General Evans? Ma'am, I would have to take it for the record, but All right. the lawyers have advised me under um, for social media misconduct, Article 92, uh, 120C for non-consent, consensual sending of photos, um, 133, conduct on becoming an officer and gentleman, 134, Clause 1, conduct prejudicial to good order and discipline, and Clause 2, conduct of a nature to bring discredit upon armed forces. I, I don't want to beat this horse, but it's very clear under 120C that it, it has to be taken without legal justification or lawful, lawful authorization. It is taken without consent or it is distributed um, without the other person's consent and other circumstances in which the other person has a reasonable expectation of privacy. So you have to, knowingly broadcasting it or distributing such a recording of that person knew or reasonably should have known was made under the circumstances listed in paragraphs one or two. In both cases, you have to show that it was originally without consent. And in many of these cases, with revenge porn, the first image is taken with consent or it's shared with consent. It's just the subsequent um, distribution. So I just wanted to make that clear, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me ask you this. How many of you um, have Facebook pages? Mr. Curta? Ma'am, I do not. General? No, ma'am, I do not. Ma'am, I do not. Admiral Burke? No, I do not. General Evans? Yes, ma'am, I do. All right. Um, of all of you, just one of you has a Facebook page. I think it would be edifying to you if you all had Facebook pages because it might help you understand how it's being used and misused. Mr. Evans, uh, um, General Evans, can you tell me a little bit about your experience using Facebook? Yes, ma'am. I, I exclusively use it for um, family and uh, close friends. And, and my uh, experience with it is, you know, I've had my Facebook duplicated 12 times. Um, with public photos, 
um, people establish a Facebook account in, in my image. I've had that, that happen. But I use mine primarily for uh, family and, and close friends. Okay. Um, one of the um, people that uh, testified at the briefing suggested that of those who were identified as uh, being active duty, when they actually went and interviewed them, uh, their picture was uh, not the same picture, but they did have their name. So there's many ways that you can uh, abuse um, the system, and that's why having the kind of uh, social media hygiene, I think, um, is a good way of looking at it, is, is really very important. Um, I know my time's expired, but I would like to ask um, one more question of each of the services. Um, I am very troubled that this has not been addressed. I think you can uh, understand my frustration. This was first identified um, four years ago in the Marines, and nothing seems to have taken place. If you have 750, if you have 100 active duty service members who are using social media in a way that is degrading and dehumanizing, um, they shouldn't be in the military. So um, what I would like for you to do uh, for the committee and uh, Mr. Chairman, with your um, approval, I would like to have each of the services report back to the committee in four months um, with the specific um, actions that you have taken in making sure that the appropriate education and training is provided to your service members that is above and beyond what you have done so far, because I think we know that that appears to be insufficient at this point in time. And then if you would, on a monthly basis, in uh, the Marines in particular, uh, report to us on the disciplinary action that's being taken against those who you identify on Marines United. Uh, we'll take those. We'll take uh, that question for the record, um, Mr. Chairman. Can I have clarification? Are we going to? Is there any objection to having them report back to us? We may have to uh, put it in the in the National Defense Authorization Act. Yeah. Why would we have to but, do that? They're here right now. If they're willing to do it. Oh, if you're willing to answer the question now, if you have the. Information now, sure, certainly. You want the you want them to answer now? Okay. I want to I want to have them okay. answer whether or not they will report no, back. If I can, if if I can do this, since we're we're over, if I can go to uh, uh, Representative McSally and then I'll go back to you, uh, Martha McSally, you're, Ms. McSally, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thanks, everybody. Sorry, I missed the f uh, first part of the hearing. I apologize for that. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Carter, good to see you again. Gina, good to see you again. Sorry, General Grosso. Um, thanks for uh, your time and uh, thoughtfulness in uh, trying to grapple with um, this 21st century challenge that we have in social media. But um, some of the discussions we've already had with General Neller, both uh, in our discussions here and in one-on-one -on -one conversations, is culture, right? And I know you're here to talk about policies, but there's also an element of culture uh, in addressing, you know, we got to make sure we have the right policies to address bad behavior and that we can take administrative or criminal action if we need to, and and that's uh, important. Um, but we also got to make sure we're not going to be able to police 24-7, from my view, um, what's going on in somebody's heart and what they're going to try and choose to do anonymously and trying to use all of our resources in the military to chase them down and uh, their activity off duty is not the best use of our resources, from my view. So we've got to inculcate in our troops um, the desire to have integrity and excellence and character and respect and honor 24-7, which I know we strive to do, and many of us are infuriated and disturbed that we're finding individuals are not doing that, right? Uh, my, my concern as it relates to scandals like this uh, is that we don't have knee-jerk reactions in addressing the culture with new policies and training and PowerPoint briefings and everything that we've got to do in order to make sure uh, that we're responding to Congress and the media and others, um, that actually, in the end, 
inculcates more resentment towards women, right? Now we're now we're having to sit through another five hour training and another PowerPoint. I mean, I've I've seen this, and those of you who've been here along, around a while, you probably know what I'm talking about. And my concern is, you know, we inculcate this culture from the very beginning when we take civilians and we turn them into the military in basic training. Um, and I still think there's things that we all need to be addressing uh, that we're not inculcating any sort of subtle resentment you know, towards the other gender. And from my view, that includes things like integration of basic training and women should be cutting their hair and, you know, not having any obvious double standards of a different experience. So um, I just wanted to sort of share that as a statement that as you all are dealing with this current situation and you're reviewing training and policies, please, please keep in mind when we're addressing these deeper cultural issues and training that we don't overdo it in a knee-jerk way that actually has the exact opposite effect of what we're trying to do. If we're inculcating resentment towards our female troops from the beginning, then that actually sows the seeds for people then having the types of behavior uh, that could come out in, in a variety of different ways, if that makes sense. Uh, I did want to ask, I know the Marines is setting up a task force on this um, that's been reported. Uh, General Berlacus, you're on that task force? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Are the other... Uh, uh, personnel chiefs represented here. Are there similar efforts going on in the other services, whatever you want to call them, task force, reviews, whatever, and are each of you represented on those? Yes, ma'am, there is one in the Air Force. Okay, great. We are represented. Yep. Same for the Navy. Same with all of you. Ma'am, not at this time. Not at this time, okay. Um, are there any reports of Army? I think there are, Army individuals. Yes, yes ma'am, I, I mentioned earlier that yeah. was, um was made aware of a, a, a Tumblr <laughs> website where there's a multi-service investigative task force looking into that, but I'm not serving on that that particular task. Okay, great. And it is a fair fair question of are there millennials on your task force who actually are experts at this type of behavior uh, in the use of social media? You may have seen the New York Times article talking about you know former Marines that are actually chasing some of these guys down and doing it in a very swift way. That's uh, uh, you know, able to do that at the speed of social media versus sometimes we work at the speed of bureaucracy. So are, are you go, reaching out to make sure we have millennials on these teams and people who kind of can understand the social media environment? Uh, <laughs> Ma'am, yes. Men, women, young, old. Um, and uh, to your earlier point, one of the discussions we had, I had, we had a two and a half hour meeting with the executive committee today uh, one of the discussions in there was about uh, not pointing this back at our women, uh, at, at, our, at our, uh, our Marines, uh, who could typically be blamed for the reaction of the organization. So we are very mindful mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to ensure that we don't, we don't create that. Because quite frankly, if you talk about respect and dignity, then we're talking about diversity, and right. we're talking about religion, and uh, sexual preference, et cetera. So this was brought to the forefront based on the behavior of individuals in treating women. Right. But it goes, if you're talking about respect and dignity, it's going to go broader than that and, when we work and, and as you know, even when we're talking about that, that's a war fighting feature, though, as you know that. It's not diversity for the sake of it. It's not social experimentation. It is we become a stronger fighting force. I know you all know this, but I think it's important because we sometimes, sometimes people think it's war fighting or, or diversity, and that gets characterized as a negative thing. This is about war fighting capability and having the best team that comes with trust and respect and honor and all, all those things that you all know of, know about. Any other... Any other comments from the other witnesses? I mean, I'm not aware that we have millennials because you can imagine it was an air staff effort, but we do, as we yeah. do this review, um, we will certainly include them um, as we try to come up with solutions to gaps we find. Is there also, and I have to choose my words wisely in, in this, if, if there's any training that's being considered related to policies um, to make sure that uh, your soldier, sailors, airmen, and marine are also aware of when they post things of themselves in this environment. Um, again, this is not blame the victim, but this is when you post something of yourself that it can be used in ways that are harmful to you uh, and to the unit, and and to provide that sort of increased, you know, situational awareness and just that awareness for some of this younger generation that maybe doesn't think about that at the time, and they come to us with those habits. Ma'am, you have identified a gap that we have found um, that we need to um, help people understand. It, you give consent up. 
when you post these, uh, when meaning it or not. So it's really, we're, we're calling it um, literacy, um, you know, social media literacy. Mm -hmm. um, just how do you know what happens with things that you mm -hmm. put um, in, the, in the ethernet? Great, thanks. Anybody else? Ma'am, for the uh, Navy, it's, uh, you know, this is just one new environment for uh, harassment, bullying, all, all those things that have been going on uh, in, frankly, in the past in, in broad daylight. Now they're going on in, in uh, you know, more hidden mm -hmm. places. So we're attacking it as an as a, as a individual's character. Uh, so it's a leadership and courage issue for us, and and we're we're attacking it uh, from that angle. Uh, teammates don't don't treat teammates like that. No bystanders. Uh, you have an obligation to take action when you see shipmates in need, and we're going after uh, those those elements of it. We do have a very diverse team working this and and uh, taking a, a multi uh, aspect approach going forward. Great. And, and uh, our uh, the the products that we made really do emphasize the. You know, when you post something, one, don't assume that because you posted it while you were in your civilian, uh, you know, role that it, it, people won't assume you're in your military role and, and so on and so forth, and it won't get forwarded. And one of the things we've, we have woven and integrated into the training at, at every level uh, to include a, a recent tri sign letter sent out by the acting secretary of the Army, the chief of staff of the Army, and a sergeant major in the Army, and he also did a, a video last week of this, is to um, think type post. Think about the communication mm -hmm. you're about to send and who's going to review it. Type of communication that conforms with Army values and post a communication that demonstrates mm -hmm. dignity and respect for both self and, and others. Great, thanks. I know I'm well over my time, but I th uh, just to go back, uh, Emma Burke, on the bystander issue, I think it's critical. Um, just like with sexual assault, sexual harassment, you do have the perpetrators, but the vast majority of people are bystanders. They get that sheep mentality. Nobody wants to speak out. Nobody wants to be looking different and uh, uh, taking on the wrath of others. That's where it's really going to the uh, result's going to be. Sorry, thank you. I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Spear. Uh, just a, a couple of points of clarification. There's a very different um, expectation when you post something on your Facebook page. That means that many people are going to see it. But when you text an intimate photograph, Im an image of yourself, to your lover as a private conversation that subsequently after you break up is then used in a form of revenge porn, that is different, and there's an expectation when you post, and there's an expectation when you text, um, and I think that's very important to distinguish. Um, General Berlakis, um, don't take offense at this, but it's very important for you to hear this, and for uh, some of your colleagues who came and spoke to us at a briefing last week. I didn't mention it last week, um, but they used the same term, and it's inappropriate. The term you just used was sexual preference. It's not a sexual preference, it's a sexual orientation. And it would behoove all of us to use the term that really is reflective of um, what is a sexual orientation. It's not a preference um, that they are. Very well, ma'am, I stand correct, and you Thank are you. correct. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McSally, you're now recognized for five minutes. Sorry, I wouldn't have gone so far over if I was going to get another round. <laughs> I'm actually good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I just following up on the bystander, which you guys all know, I think that's really critical. Thank you. And uh, just to uh, inform the committee that, that we'll be asking for, for a briefing uh, from, from all the services present to include the Department of Defense uh, in, in four months to uh, receive an update at, in, ter in terms of what actions you've taken uh, between uh, this hearing and, and four months. Now, I wish to thank the witnesses for their testimony uh, this afternoon. This has, been a very uh, this has been very informative. There being no further business, the subcommittee stands adjourned. Oh, no, that's fine.